Well, hello and welcome to the Disability and Jesus hosted Sunday service for Sunday the 18th of September, the 14th Sunday in the Trinity season and still within a time of national mourning for the death of Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. This is a slightly more formal service than we do previously. Just to acknowledge the fact this is quite a momentous moment in our history. For some people, this is almost neither here nor there to their lives, and we acknowledge and recognise that. For others, the loss of the Queen is very significant to them and to us, and we acknowledge that too. So today's service will be drawing on something of the life of the Queen and what she meant, using some formal liturgy from the Church of England, but of course not losing our own style as disability and Jesus. So some words from Jesus himself recorded in the Gospel of John. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And some words from Romans. Paul writes this, I am sure and convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So wherever you are, however you are, and whoever you are, at this time of being apart and in this space together, you are very welcome to this service today. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Those born of woman have but a short time to live. We have our fill of sorrow. We blossom like a flower and wither away. We slip away like a shadow and do not stay. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. In the midst of life we are in death. Where can we turn for help? Only to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, O Lord. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. You know the secrets of our hearts. Forgive us our sins. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Eternal and merciful judge, both in life and when we come to die, let us not fall away from you. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins, and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, 
the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Over the years of being ordained, I have taken quite a lot of funerals. Um, I once decided to try and count them all up and see how many I'd done. And I got to something like so two or three hundred. Many of them I can remember, some of them very memorable. Uh, the very first one I did on my own without my training incumbent alongside me was definitely memorable another time. Uh, some have sort of faded from my memories for different reasons, but each one extraordinarily precious. And at each one, there is a mixture when you go to do the visit with family or next of kin or perhaps just the undertakers, if there's no one else to talk to. It's a mixture of memories and laughter and sadness. I don't think I've done a funeral for anyone who has been perfect. That might come as a disappointment to you, uh, but none of the stories I've been told have been about perfection. All of the stories were memories from different perspectives and different family members and friends and neighbours of that person's life, their character, their personality, the good, the bad, and on occasion, the downright ugly. I do remember one of my college tutors telling us when we were in Vicar Factory at Training Stage that uh, he had done a funeral where everyone had sung the praises of the person who died, and so he'd reflected that in the service. And as he was standing at the church door at the end of the service, and the coffin was being loaded back into the hearse again. Uh, the vicar was saying goodbye to people and thank you for coming. And, and one old fella came past and went, lovely words, vicar. But I have to say, the bloke who died, he was a bit of a bugger. Now, my vicar friend didn't quite know what to do with that. And so I smiled and went, mm. and at the wake afterwards, out came the other stories of the slightly less glowing side of the person whose funeral he'd just done. What I'm saying is that for every individual we meet and for each of us as we are, we have both glowing parts of our story and less glowing parts of our story. We are in a time of national mourning and I know that for all of us, all of us as part of this community and those who are viewing today, will have different takes on what that means. For some of us, the story we would come to the funeral with is one of disappointment, of systems that were corrupt, of a figurehead that didn't challenge enough, of someone who was too part of a system to be able to change it from the inside. Others may well come to this space and this place feeling a deep sense of loss. We didn't know the Queen personally, but somehow she's been part of our story and that loss is felt keenly even if it can't be articulated. And for some who are very much royalists, the monarchy is really meaningful and the queen has a deep place in your hearts. So just as in any funeral I've ever taken with different people coming from different perspectives and with different ways of marking the moment, some with resentment, some with loss, some with a sense of hope, so we as the D&J community here in this place and this space come together with those different perspectives on what the Queen meant to each one of us. 
we changed our readings today when we knew that we were going to be the night before, the day before the Queen's State Funeral. And we moved from the standard lectionary reading to this reading from Revelation 21. It's one that often appears in funerals. It is a thing of beauty. It is a thing of hope. It is a thing of promise when all around seems unstable. It is a promise of what is yet to come. It's a promise of God's heavenly space being a place where there is no tears, no crying, no death, no mourning and no pain. It is a place and a space where all things come together, where there is just love and hope, where God himself or herself, God themselves, is on a throne, but not a throne of power, but a throne of grace. And God speaks the words and says, I have been at the beginning of everything and the end of everything. I have been in the good times and the low times, the high times and the holy times. I give water to those who are thirsty. And I belong to you and you belong to me. You see, the Queen's death, the death of the monarchy, whatever it is that you want to describe it in this season, can also stir up feelings around us of other deaths that we have been through. The death of those who we have loved and lost over the years, family, friends, neighbours, colleagues, whoever. The death of a significant figure in society can actually bring up some of those maybe unresolved feelings of grief for other people. So I saw someone talking on the TV saying, I don't know why I'm so upset by the Queen. And their friend said, I think probably you've got some grief from something else. And this has allowed it to come out. Which is why again today we felt as D&J, it was important to mark the moment as to say, yes, tomorrow is the state funeral of the Queen but also to hold each other in this place of strangeness. Because it may well be that you, like me, are having to deal with some grief from other people we've lost. And the Queen's death has been a trigger for being allowed to cry at those other deaths maybe we haven't marked yet or haven't felt able to mark. Hence choosing the reading from Revelation 21, that actually when someone dies, all is not lost. Yeah, they're not here anymore, and therefore there are big questions around the space they once occupied. How do we deal with that? How do we live and move and have our being when they are no longer part of that story? But the good news of the gospel, good news of Jesus, the good news of grace and mercy, is that we are actually eternal in that God has a place for each one of us when we leave this space, when we die, and we arrive in our heavenly home. There's another bit I quite often use in funerals, uh, again from John's Gospel. I think it might be John 7, but don't quote me on that, where Jesus says to the disciples, don't worry or be afraid when we talk of death. I'm going to go ahead of you and prepare a place for you. Actually, it might be John 14. And Thomas says, we don't know where you're going. How do we, how do we know how to get there? And Jesus says, you follow me. I am the way, the truth and the life. So follow me the way, trust the words I'm speaking to you because they're true and know that there is life that continues. Friends, whether it is for the queen that you mourn today and in this national period of mourning, whether it is your mourning for the lack of democracy that you feel that the death of the queen is highlighting, whether it is for those you have loved and lost over the years for whom you grieve now, However you find yourself in this strange time, may you cling on to that promise of Revelation 21, of heaven being a place and a space where there is no more crying or pain or mourning, and God himself wipes the tears from our eyes and knows that we are loved by him and that God loves us very dearly. Death is not the end. It is a new beginning. May God be with you in this time of grief and uncertainty, and in all the days to come. Amen.
Let us pray to the Lord who has conquered death. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. Jesus, bread from heaven, you satisfy the hungry with good things. Grant us a share with all the faithful departed in the banquet of your kingdom. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. Jesus, the light of the world, you gave the man born blind the gift of sight. Open the eye of faith and bring us from darkness to your eternal light and glory. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. Jesus, Son of the living God, you summoned your friend Lazarus from death to life. Raise us at the last to full and eternal life with you. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. Jesus, crucified Saviour, in your dying you entrusted each to the other, Mary your mother and John your beloved disciple. Sustain and comfort all who mourn. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. Jesus, our way and truth and life. You drew your disciple Thomas from doubt to faith. Reveal the resurrection faith to the doubting and the lost. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. May God in his infinite love and mercy Bring the whole church, living and departed in the Lord Jesus, to a joyful resurrection and the fulfilment of his eternal kingdom. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, lover of souls. You uphold us in life and sustain us in death. To you be glory and praise for ever. For the darkness of this age is passing away, as Christ, the bright and morning star, brings to his saints the light of life. As you give light to those in darkness who walk in the shadow of death, so remember in your kingdom your faithful servant Elizabeth, that death may be for her the gate to life and to unending fellowship with you, where with your saints you live and reign, one in the perfect union of love now and for ever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so we close our time together with prayer for the Queen, prayer for the King. And a final word of blessing. Into your hands, O Father and Lord, we commend your servant, our late Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth. Enlighten her with your holy grace and suffer her never to be separated from you, O Lord in Trinity, God everlasting. Amen. A prayer for the King. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our sovereign Lord, King Charles III, and all who are in authority under him, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your name and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
And a final word of blessing. May God in his infinite love and mercy bring the whole church, living and departed, to a joyful resurrection and the fulfillment of his eternal kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>